All right, hello, wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday. And you know, I mean, the best way to start out a tasting is with champagne, as far as I'm concerned. And when you got Champagne Wayne tasting you on the wine, so you know if he's got champagne with him. Well, he's always got champagne with him. That's why they call him Champagne Wayne. Anyways, uh, he's our rep now for, well, the company, the parent company that owns Chateau Saint-Michel, Nicholas Fallot, Stag's Leap Wine Cellars, Antica. They've got a lot of great products, so um, eh, he's got champagne. So usually Wayne stops in with a little champagne to start our tastings. This 2004 Blanc de Blanc, my favorite products from Nicholas Fallot, which we've got almost everything that these guys make in the store, a great Negotiant, the largest co-op in Champagne, the CBC, and Nicholas Falada, a very famous guy there. And um, I think they make very good sparkling wines here, even though the entry level can be eh, a little ho-hum sometimes. This 2004 Blanc de Blanc has got lovely concentration and richness here, lovely almond, kind of green apple, lemon, citrus fruit, some pr fresh bread dough-like aromas on the nose, pretty floral notes, lovely creaminess on the tongue, that almond nutty notes kind of showing candy ginger spice, pretty floral notes on the finish. Excellent juice at 50 bucks. The Blanc de Blancs to me are a little better food wines. They've got a little more brightness, a little richness uh, to the palate maybe. And um, I really like them. One of my favorite styles of champagne. All right, the Stag Seed Wine Cellar Sauvignon Blanc. This wine's um, got a little Sauvignon musk and Semillon in it from the big ranch vineyard. Even though this uh, winery was sold, all right, Warren Winarski doesn't own it anymore. Warren kept part of the vineyards, the uh, Arcade. Media Vineyard, I think he kept that one. Anyways, they still use a lot of the same vineyard sites for this label. And uh, even though they ratcheted it up a couple notches in production, well, it's mostly the hands of time. The stuff with the Fay and the, you know, the Cast 23, you, you can only make so much of those wines. Those are from specific vineyard sites. Anyways, the Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, really nice, bright and crisp on the tongue. A good amount of cantaloupe, kind of melon fruit, a slight salty minerally note showing there as well. Crisp and savory finish. Leaves the tongue salivating for food. Very good stuff at 21 bucks. but Sauvignon Blanc is a cheap date. You can find a lot of stuff in that $20 price range. It is very good. The Merlot 2008. I like the way this 2008 vintage is drinking. Really forward, seductive, red currant, plumberry fruit showing some notes of milk, chocolate, and uh, herbs on the nose. 100% varietal wine. Smooth and round on the palate. This wine's got a lovely soft and velvet texture that milk chocolate showing through on the finish lovely freshness excellent juice here the 2008 stags leaf wine cellars merlot the artemis cabernet i'm um, sorry this is half of their production of their hundred thousand cases they make fifty thousand cases of artemis this is the wine that they've really ramped the production up on this 2010 vintage a difficult year well lower in production but still a really nice little wine 12 percent merlot in the blend classic california a Cabernet Vintage, Cassis, Black Cherry Fruit, Cigar Box Spice, some sweet herbs in the nose, Toasty Oak Spice, that dark cocoa. Nice complexity here, densely packed on the tongue as well, rich and uh, chewy, that dark cherry and Kirsch-like fruit showing nice intensity, but good freshness as well. Like I said, a classic vintage for Napa Valley. This wine, uh, really excellent bottle of wine for 50 bucks and at that production level. The Fay, uh, this is from the Fay Vineyard, so it's 100% estate bottled. Uh, this is one of the vineyards that goes into cask. Uh, and uh, well, it's one of their top wines. This wine's always really outstanding. The 2009, a great vintage. Really forward and seductive bouquet. Even right after opening, this wine's got some lovely dark currant, cassis berry fruit, lovely toasty oak spice, wonderful concentration and richness in this wine. Espresso, coffee notes, really densely packed on the tongue with layers of that dark currant and cassis berry fruit. Really lovely richness. These 2009s showing some wonderful fruit at this young stage, but some loamy earth notes coming in at the end. Lovely balance and depth in this wine. Most excellent juice at 80 84 bucks and kind of taking a little step down here with this Antica, but the Antica 2009 also really good, just maybe not quite as big as that Fay. This is 100% varietal from the Ancinori's Vineyard up on Atlas Peak. Really well endowed bouquet of aromas, though. Distinct earthy quality to this one. Uh, dark cocoa, espresso, kind of black olive note to that current and cassis berry fruit showing lovely depth of and concentration of aromas in this wine as well. Well, maybe just as big as the wine on the palate. Really dark and dense black earth and black cherry fruit showing a firm hand of acidity and tannins here. This wine needs a little bit of time. It's got some uh, some dry tannins coming on the finish. Lots of earth and minerality, but plenty of fruit to match. Most excellent juice. And then the two hands of time wines, a 2010 uh, Chardonnay, I think showing a little better than the, the Cabernet. These wines on-premise only. Oh, I'm sorry. We can't have them. Every other retail store in the world's got them. The 2011 Cabernet, I'm sorry. A little bit expensive. 30 bucks. This is a difficult year. This is where you see, I think... 
the real problems with a vintage like 2011 with these big uh, production wines like the Hands of Time wine. And uh, this wine showing a little herbaceous, a little bit devoid of fruit, really short on the finish. For 30 bucks, a little short in the quality. For my opinion, there's a lot of great stuff out there for Napa in that price range. And uh, the Chardonnay, though, I think, you know, definitely a little uh, a little more concentration of richness is in this, in this wine. And that is uh, due to the vintage 2010, 2011, a very difficult year in Napa. All right, check it out. That's what I had to drink with our friend Champagne Wayne. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying, remember, always drink the good stuff first.